the format of today's session is that we will do a brief presentation, about 15 minutes or so, so that we're all roughly on a similar page in terms of our working definition of DAOs, which can be iterated and changed, but as well what the exercise today will look like. So after that 20 minute presentation, um, we will do an exercise to create a mapping of, of initial taxonomies of DAOs and we'll split into smaller groups, then we'll regroup and share our findings, split into smaller groups again for another iteration, and then we'll close with next steps for research and how to continue. Cool. Um, so the workshop is called Taxonomy of DAOs, and just think over here. So, but it's actually towards an initial taxonomy of DAOs because a taxonomy is about a PhD's worth of work and we have about two hours today. So we're doing taxonomy of DAOs, but what's a DAO? Um, so a lot of people use this term very differently uh, and a lot of its origins are very far from where we're at today. So a lot of people might remember in 2014, 2015, there was the concept of kind of unstoppable businesses. Um, and also the idea of kind of runaway Skynet-like entities, a certain autonomous organization. And the idea that it would kind of run away and there was no way either jurisdictionally or otherwise to stop it. But then looking at where we are at today, DAOs look very different than this. Most of them in entail some form of like human interaction. Um, so for the purposes of the workshop today, we've put together a rough definition that's actually coming from a rough definition for audiences outside of the blockchain realm. So it might not be as technical as you are used to. Um, so we're planning today decentralized autonomous organizations as a software-based organizational framework lowering the cost of in institutional guarantees and using incentive design to coordinate for common goals. And of course, as far as definitions go, all of these separate terms inside this definition could use their own. But for the purposes of today, we will iterate and validate this definition through the process of taxonomy design. And to get started um, with the kind of definition of DAOs, we thought we would highlight just a couple of DAOs that I think a lot of us are familiar with that are operating today. All right, so I'm going to talk a little about Moloch. Um, so we started to break this down into just like a few components right now to talk about, but in the exercise there will also be a few more. Um, so for Prime Directive, that's like, okay, what's the, what's the purpose of this DAO? And for Moloch, it's, you know, accelerating the development of public Ethereum infrastructure, um, because part of the reason is, yeah, many teams need this throughout the Ethereum ecosystem, but they, they don't want to do it alone, partly because they might think the Ethereum Foundation should pay for more of it, but you know, if you pull more of your funds together as a network of organizations, maybe we can accomplish more. Um, and then the, the membership process for Moloch is a, an existing member of the DAO needs to champion new membership proposals. And as part of that championing process, you have to deposit, deposit 10 ETH. Um, and even if the, the, the member doesn't get approved in the DAO, the person that champions it will get the 10 ETH back. So there's no like like slashing if you propose a member that's not that, that didn't get admitted. And then basically the voting process for all proposals, whether it's for um, becoming a voting member or applying to get shares that you confirm so you can develop something, um, you just need like a simple majority um, and there's no quorum required. So if Moloch is about 60 people now, and like you know five people show up in the vote, uh, it will it would still pass. And uh, as I said before, it's like there are two types of proposals, but as far as the smart contract goes, it doesn't really care um, if you're applying to be a member or if you're applying to be a grantee of the project. Um, and then Moloch also has an exit process. Not all DAOs necessarily do but it's a, like a novel uh, rage quitting mechanism where, um, where it allows you to exit the DAO and especially if a proposal is about to be passed and you don't align with it or you feel that the DAO is moving in the wrong direction, it's like wasting money, you don't want it to take some of your money, um, you can rage quit and uh, since the proposals are in a grace period, you'll get uh, your proportion of the treasury back. So, so yeah, DAO, uh, Moloch is unique in the sense that there is a common treasury and each person owns a stake of it because whenever you're applying for membership, you're, you're, putting, you're depositing money into the DAO um, in exchange for your shares. Um, so that's basically describing Moloch briefly. Do you want to talk about Genesis? 
So how many people are familiar with Genesis DAO? Could I see a show of hands? Okay, so about a third of people. Um, so Genesis DAO is another example of a DAO that's operating today. Um, it's based on the DAO stack framework and operated by DAO stack. How many of you are familiar with DAO stack? Just to see a show of hands. So a few more. Cool. So you can kind of, and they might disagree with some of what I say, but this is what I think. I've used my own. Um, I see Genesis as the main kind of um, advocacy DAO for DAO stack. So it was started by DAO stack members and is often maintained by a larger kind of Genesis DAO community. So similarly in keeping and defining a DAO, um, having a prime directive or its kind of objective function um, to simplify for the Genesis DAO, which is built on the DAO stack framework, its role is to accelerate the development of public DAO stack based infrastructure and organizations. So that means the Genesis DAO is primarily to support both the technical development of DAO stack, but also the commu community and social development of DAO stack. So what it looks like in practice is like a community forum that you use MetaMask or Gnosis Safe to interact with and send transactions. And you come to decisions about who might be funded for some community work, community fundraising, who might be funded for some technical work, like building bonding curves for DAO. Um, but it looks mostly like a forum that people vote on and come to conclusions about how to support DAO stack in a larger frame. So the membership process, um, basically, it works different for different DAO stack DAOs, but for the Genesis DAO, it's more culturally determined at the moment. So the kind of cultural norms around becoming a member of the Genesis DAO is that a wallet address, ideally a human identifiable person, um, but that's not technically hard-coded, submits a proposal advocating for their own membership. Um, so what this looks like, I did it. Um, there was basically a Google form that I put together being like, my name's Kia, I want to join the DAO because I want to support this community doing X, Y, Z. Here's what I've done in the past to support this community. Please accept my request for reputation. So reputation is not to be confused with Augur's reputation. It's actually a token that's internal to DAO stack DAOs and is non-transferable. So you can think about it almost in a sense of um, you might have a token that's financial capital, whereas reputation in a DAO stack DAO is social capital. So when you advocate for your own membership, what that means is that you are given reputation or social capital by the DAO and thus have voting power in the DAO. Um, so the membership process, just to simplify, is you go to the DAO and say, hey, I want to join, and then people vote on whether you join or not. Um, and usually you're using some sort of persona or human readable identity to advocate for yourself. Um, and the voting process is somewhat complex, but to do a super simplified version, this is based on the DAO stack framework. The Genesis DAO, once again, is based on the DAO stack framework. And they use holographic consensus, which you can basically say, um, there's like two tiers of how the governance process works. One is that um, there's a basic voting process, but on top of this voting process, there's independent prediction markets where you use the Gen DAO stack token to predict whether a proposal will pass or not. If you predict successfully that a proposal will pass, it will get boosted in the main interface. And being boosted just means it kind of appears at the top of the interface and no longer requires an absolute majority to pass. So absolute majority means 50% um, of the people who have voting power need to vote. Um, instead, it has relative uh, majority, which means that only 50% of the people who vote, of the reputation voting power that votes, has to vote in order for it to pass. So basically, to simplify that, there's a prediction market that says, I think this proposal will pass independent of the vote. And then if that prediction market does, it means it's a lot easier for that vote to either pass or fail. If you don't have a boosted proposal, it's really hard to get something passed. Um, simplified. <laughs> and there's a lot of other kind of smaller nuances, uh, but I don't want to go necessarily into them in detail, but very happy when we go into breakout sessions to help any group that wants to look at this DAO. And one thing that's interesting in terms of comparing Genesis DAO to Moloch DAO is the exit process. Um, so whereas Moloch, I think a lot of us are familiar with the kind of rage quitting, everyone likes using the term. In, in DAO stack DAOs, um, you could say that the exit process is actually technically undefined. Whereas in Moloch, it's leveraged. Um, in Genesis, you could say it's actually difficult to exit the DAO. You could do a proposal that says, hey, I want to be no longer recognized as a member. But since, at least um, kind of technically speaking, their reputation or voting power is non-transferable, there is no way that you should be able to give it up <laughs> um, unless you were to, in some way, you know, maybe like publish a private key or something. Um, so there's not really a way that the exit is technically leveraged or socially leveraged in DAO stack DAOs yet.
Um, so for today, um, to switch gears a little bit, those are some DAO really super brief examples. Um, but to bring it back to taxonomy design um, and to look at where we are at with what we mean about DAOs today, um, we're building on the work of this paper. Um, hopefully you guys can read this. Um, it's called uh, A Method for Taxonomy Development and Its Applications and Information Systems. Its primary author is Nickerson, and it was published in 2012. Um, so maybe... Taking pics. Um, um, so we wanted to use a little bit more rigor in terms of how we approach this rather than being like these DAOs fit in this group, these other DAOs fit in another group. So we're going to do a, another super brief run through of the methodology we'll be following today before we break out into groups and try it ourselves. Um, so to define taxonomy now, um, taxonomy is a system that describes how different concepts are related and organized within a specific hierarchical structure. <coughs> Um, but in the context of this workshop, in the context of the paper that we'll be following, um, they define rather laboriously a taxonomy as a set of dimensions consisting of mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive characteristics. So what does that mean? Mutually exclusive means that, um, and you guys, once we have the worksheets out and everything, it will become more clear, but mutually exclusive means that um, one DAO in a certain dimension can't belong to multiple different ca characteristics. So you can't say that a DAO, if you look at membership entrance process, um, you can't say that a DAO is both permissioned and permissionless. You have to pick one or the other, and the taxonomy categories have to be mutually exclusive in that way. A DAO can't belong to several of them at the same time, otherwise you won't produce a kind of clear tree of a taxonomy. Does that make sense? Okay. And collectively exhaustive characteristics, every DAO has to, there shouldn't be a characteristic that's empty or um, there shouldn't be a DAO that doesn't fit on the list because then the taxonomy doesn't include the whole field. Um, and you could say that it's used to explain and operationalize a category of objects that taxonomy is. So this means that it shouldn't necessarily be perceived as an ontology. It, it could be used to produce an ontology, but mainly, and throughout the research paper, it says what's a, what's a useful taxonomy, what's a good taxonomy, and the tautological definition is that it's one that is used. <laughs> so we don't see this as necessarily a finite kind of description of a static field, but one that's put into use to produce new language, to, produce, to also highlight where there are gaps currently. Sure. So... This uh, diagram or uh, flowchart that we're going to go through is in that paper, and it basically describes the process. So, um, first to begin with, you'll determine the meta char characteristics. So, um, it's a high-level interaction between, uh, for our case, it's a, the high-level interaction between a user and a decentralized autonomous organization. Um, and then the the ultimate, like what it, what are our ending conditions? And it's to conclude an addition, uh, an initial taxonomy. We will map a set of DAOs and a mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive characteristic. So that's essentially what Kia just went over. Um, so this is like the, <laughs> the diagram of uh, the, di the different paths you can take. You can either start with conceptual to empirical. Um, basically, you can conceptualize new characteristics and dimensions of DAOs, um, examine the objects for these characteristics and, and dimensions, and then create or revise your taxonomy. Um, and then for uh, empirical to conceptual, it's identify a subset of DAOs, um, identify common characteristics and group the DAOs, and then group these characteristics into dimensions to create or revise your taxonomy. So as you're going through this process, like, I mean, we did exercises before we we're talking about DAOs, we're figuring out the characteristics, and then that's just flowing into applying them to other DAOs, and it's just like this loop until you like come up with like the, the best terms to describe or to create the taxonomy. Um, so, so, as, uh, so as we said in the definition of taxonomy, it's a set of dimensions used to used to consist, used, uh, consist in like mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive characteristics. So what is a dimension, what is a characteristic? Um, so uh, you have one dimension and it can have multiple characteristics. So one example is, like she just said, membership entrance. Permissioned, permissionless, closed. Um, we can talk more about you know, what closed might be. I don't know if you want to talk about that now. But that's kind of like, um, it's like for permissioned, it's, uh, there's like a clear way, like in, encoded in the smart contracts for how you can enter. For permissionless, um, it's like that's also in the smart contracts, but you don't have to like apply to join. You can like buy the token on the market. And then for close, that's just kind of like 
It's a decentralized autonomous organization, but it's it could be something like with ten groups, you're like a ten people. You're in it with a group of friends, and you just kind of like decide when to add people to the DAO or not, just like based on the people that are in the the organization. So that's more of a DAO in the the technical sense of like people are creating an organization on the blockchain, but it doesn't really have like easy entry paths or yeah, essentially. Um, so then, basically, uh, what we're going to do in developing the taxonomy is we come up with more dimensions and we come up with more characteristics. Like whenever we went through the example with uh, Moloch and Genesis before, we also defined something like exit process, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, after this, uh, the, the, after this pre presentation is done, we're going to do some of these exercises ourselves. Um, but basically, in the worksheets. Um, what we're going to be doing. Do you want to talk about this here? Yeah. yeah, so that was our kind of brief presentation and to give an overview of DAOs and taxonomy design. So do we feel like, well, okay, so I'll say what we're going to do first and then we'll see how clear it is. Um, so what we would like to do is actually have people break into groups of, it's quite a lot of us, so I'd say maybe five to six people um, with the people around you. And we are going to pass out worksheets where we've actually predefined um, dimensions and characteristics for the taxonomy, such as membership entrance, membership exit, the number of active participants, legal entity, etc. Um, and so it's a kind of gridded row like this, and all of these that are on the slide right now. Um, so. And we've suggested several example DAOs for you to evaluate in your group. So we've suggested Moloch, Genesis, the DAO, MakerDAO, and <coughs> Ethereum. And of course, some of these may or may not be what we come to define as DAOs in the future. Um, but you are also welcome, because there are blank rows and columns in the worksheet, to choose your own DAOs to evaluate, and also to suggest your own dimensions and characteristics that should belong in the taxonomy, based on the brief framework we just laid out. Um, so if we go back one slide again. So for the moment, we will take about 15 to 20 minutes in groups, to, and we ideally have each group um, evaluate two to three DAO instances, and it is encouraged for you to pick DAOs that are not on the worksheet. And actually, um, you know, I'm happy to provide and go around and do a list of DAOs that we are more familiar with, and I'm happy to help you work with them, and I think we'll be just roaming to provide any missing information. Yeah, and then, oh, should we do that now? Uh, I mean, before that happens, or is it after? Sorry. Um, I was going to skip it. We could do it. Okay, okay. sure. Okay. Yeah, happy okay. to do it. Um, so maybe then if you bring up the spreadsheet, and then people can see what I did. We already have these, yeah. I guess if we work with this. Um, so do you want to facilitate that then? Sure. Um, so another thing that we can do together before we start um, going through the taxonomy for before we start doing this for the taxonomy or the, the dimensions that we've defined, we can also come up with a few as a group that can be written on the sheets, just so we can go through the process of um, you know defining the dimensions and characteristics together. So maybe we can just start off by doing one um, and see like for right now like right now if someone wants to raise their hand and propose another dimension. But what we have here is Membership entrance, membership ex exit, number of active participants, legal entity, dispute revolution, resolution, life, uh, life cycle phase, human identity, and deliberation. It's like there are a few more dimensions, and if you have an idea, you can raise your hand right now. Uh, so when you say like legal entity, do you mean the DAO itself is wrapped in one, or...? Yes, legal, yes, like it has a legal wrapper type. Um, like, uh, for example, like MakerDAO, um, there are a lot of stakeholders like Backpack Foundation or Aragon uh, Network DAO. I didn't put it on that sheet because I don't know how many people are familiar with the operations of Aragon DAO, but I'd love John to put it on the sheet. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's kind of what legal entity means. But for for now, we can see if anyone has a, an idea for another dimension, and if you don't, we can go through it. Engagement threshold or desired engagement threshold. And um, so we have number of active participants, and the way that we have defined that right now is um, how many addresses or nodes have participated in governance over the past 12 months. So 
we tried to define that as like engagement, but I guess that the threshold would be like how many people how many people are members versus how many people are active. Um, that might be. I'm trying to phrase it better when I'm working. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking like sure. if the DAO aims at having a high participation, or it aims at having a low participation for the decision making. Okay. So it's not related to what's happening, but it is designed for. Okay. Let's let's you... go through. Uh, no, this this will be interesting to see if we can uh, create uh, like some dimensions around it. So maybe let's try. Should we try like five or ten minutes just talking about this use case? Okay. Um, So what would you what would you define as uh, the characteristics of this threshold? Gas paying actions is the first layer. Say that again. Gas paying actions. Gas paying actions. Yeah, so thinking, thinking if you're watching um, governance participation, but actions that involve gas, so staking, uh, voting, and reporting. Okay, I'm I'm trying to see where you're going with this. Uh, gas. Say that again. Gas. Gas. Paying okay, okay. Actions that cost gas. Okay, and then what's the, the next? Uh... So now we're going to isolate voting. Mm -hmm. as, uh, what we're gonna we're no, what are, what are the, um, the other characteristics for engagement? Like, how, many, how many times a day should you check the, the DAO? That would be one, like the engagement threshold. Yeah. Like yeah. How much uh, daily attention is required for like looking at the status or seeing what the new votes are or something, would that count? So, no, yeah, now we're defining what Yeah, I need your help here. I'm not, I'm not seeing these as, as related. Yeah. Are you? No, I was just trying to, to separate two types of DAOs, ones that wants 1% 1 participation and one that wants 30% participation. That's pretty much what So I'm kind of like quorum, or? I, you could just uh, Let's say attention-hungry DAOs and attention-like DAOs. That's what I was trying to separate. Okay. Yeah. So how would you, uh, if you're going to take Moloch and Genesis as an example? Perfect. perfect. No, can, so for, say we're, it's on the sheet right now. So the two options are attention hungry. Well, ideal ideal governance through low percentage subset of users. Ideal governance through high percentage subset of users. Right. Okay. Does that work? Cool. I guess the problem I find with it is it's like... It's like a very, it's not like defined in any code, it's yeah, not. That's why I said I'm going to try to write it better. Let's okay, see. okay. Yeah, so this is a, something we just ran into a lot when we were um, setting some of the dimensions ourselves, is that a lot of them are hard to qu quantify, but also you would want a significant amount of data to be able to set what that threshold parameter would be. Um, so you would want to look at all existing nodes, and this is why we realize it's kind of like a PAC of work that we want to continue, is that you would want this data to be able to say like the threshold of activity is like 30%, or like how many transactions interact with the DAO smart contracts on a given day. And you would want to look at all of the operating DAOs and then find an average there and choose the breakpoint. So it's really hard to quantify for this. I think it is really important to set it as a moving target, but we don't necessarily have the data for it. So I would say like there's a quorum, which is like level of engagement and kind of mandated technical engagement in order for the DAO to function. But then there's also just amount of transactions interacting with the smart contracts of the DAO um, on a given day. And you could, but also I think that there is a little bit of a chicken and an egg problem where. Um, you could say that, oh, it's optimal governance is for a small amount of people. But then it's like, what if that optimal or stated objectives change over time? Um, and then it becomes for large or whatever. They're both kind of in a recursive feedback loop. Yeah, so, as we said, the feedback loop also between taxonomy and, and fuel like, deployment. As you put something, let's say that you make in your taxonomy that the DAO states their desired engagement threshold, then actually when we deploy DAOs, now we're going to actually think about it. Because it is in the taxonomy, so the feedback loop between like how structure shapes agency and agency shapes structure. Um, I think it would be really cool that we tr we try to figure this one out eventually. And in DAOs, like specifically, they're thinking of creating like upgrade your DAO buttons, and this is also really something easy to deploy on on Aragon. That you would have like ideal governance for 15 people. When your DAO reaches 25 people, there's a button like, hey, do you want to? Take a moment to reflect on what are different parameters you might want to upload to. Great. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, that's very interesting. Um, and, I, and we can talk more about maybe an example where it might be easier that's not on the, the worksheet that could be kind of related, just like general, like what is the voting process? You know, is it, um, is it based on one person, one vote? You know, like you have some kind of identity uh, mechanism so you can actually use that governance process. Is it token weighted? Is it like reputation weighted? So it's like that's that's an example of something that we could have as, you know, how, how do people engage? What's the voting process? Because if you're talking about, like, as things upgrade, um, that is introducing another, like, voting mechanism, right? Um, so then that mechanism can just start to be like, defined. So, I mean, I think that can be an, an interesting exercise or dimension to think about in this worksheet because that is, like, also one of the, the most, like, easier ones to grasp. But yeah, I think the ones that involve data are super in interesting, but difficult to do um, in the context of this workshop. Like we were even thinking as far as like, okay, how do we, um, like some of these, maybe it's like a, like a Gaussian distribution and we wanna like figure out like, what's that number there? Like what's that number there for like um, average holdings of a, per of a like average, uh, um, like a current or average number of tokens that each like Ethereum address has. It's like, well, maybe you have like, you know, a lot of people at the top or maybe it's not like that. It's like a, a different distribution curve. So I think um, there are a lot of like interesting metrics that would be nice to define and then see where the different DAOs fit. Uh, yeah, another uh, question that came up was like, uh, how do you define the DAOs used to manage funds or not? And this is connected to another thing that is if the decision is then made on chain or off chain. Because some DAOs are just used to make decisions and not to release funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just to repeat that so that everybody heard, one proposed dimension is um, does the DAO manage funds or not? Yes or no? And then there would be a corollary to that, whereas if the management of funds is directly on chain, so a DAO could be used just to make decisions about where funds go, but it doesn't necessarily facilitate the actual transaction. Or if the output is something that is not really using funds, but that I'm implementing a policy in a company. Right. For an organization. Makes sense. So it could also just be implementing a policy. We can definitely use that one. Um, so there is certain things of like, it does get a little ambiguous here because with Ethereum, most interactions involve some sort of funds in some way always. Um, but we could say, is there a smart contract that holds, um, manages a common funding pool? And, uh, and is it that funding pool managed on-chain through the DAO decision-making process? Mm -hmm. Great. So is that clear to everybody as a potential one? Cool. Thanks. Just use, use the common, you know, uh, dimensions that are used for for, for classifying um, consensus protocols, right? Because that's any voting term. So is it is it, is it team volatile? Is it not? Right? Does it have life liveness requirements? Right? Is it is it is it does it require full synchrony, partial synchrony? Is it asynchronous? Mm -hmm. Right? Are there guarantees? Right? Is there so what type of attack vectors do you have? Right? What are the, the different types of distortion text readings? Blah 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 all that stuff. So this is already given. So we can definitely use those. I think what we set out to find as the meta characteristic for doing this taxonomy is on a higher level human interaction with the DAO. And a lot of those definitions are very much on the kind of protocol like layer zero level. Um, so I think that they, I would definitely encourage, we can use some of them, liveness, asynchronous, yes, no. Um, happy to write, to use those as part of it. But I think that we are not necessarily doing a kind of base layer examination along those lines today. Um, you could say this sort of staking, like this monetary reputation, a hybrid, it's about time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Whether shares are recognized as securities in U.S. law? <laughs> Maybe we'll keep that one. Off the worst yet. <laughs> <laughs> In the back? Um, like approach to profit, whether it pays out to individual shareholders proportionally or equally, or whether it doesn't make profit at all. Sure. Sure. One of the ones we're thinking is um, is it profit or non profit? But I like the distinction of um, also you could put like, 
for-profit hierarchical, um, for-profit cooperative, for-profit. You could make a smaller distinction, a, a more granular distinction there, which I like. Yeah. Um, and then for security token, we can do like, like for the ones that we don't, like people created them and they never really said what it was and it's based on like exchanges to analyze, those can be undefined, but I think there are like, you know, queer tokens that say this is a security token. token. Maybe no is going to be harder. <laughs> yeah, but it can also be like utility. One of the one yeah, of the but people might say it's a utility, but it's a security. So you can say uh, utility token because they say it's one, but maybe not. <laughs> like so that that can be like you know another branch. It's like is it no because the team said it's no, or because it was analyzed by someone else that it said it was no. Like because yeah, that's a maybe that's related to like undefined. Yeah. <laughs> um, this this might be too low level, but uh, maybe like uh, which uh, like framework it's built on. Totally. And you could say also like which Does is it, it built on a framework, framework or not? Yeah, or is it built on a framework? Yeah. And as you realize, this is also like kind of turtles all the way down because you then have you find a framework, whatever. But let's. Yeah, well, I mean, you could say, like, everything based on Aragon OS, it's either compatible with Aragon OS or it's not. So yep. it's like, and probably the same with, I guess, ARC or whatever the lowest level of DAO stack is. Yeah, totally. And you could also say, like, forks of Moloch um, right. are not necessarily They're not compatible, Moloch, yeah. but you could say that they are built on an existing framework that also other DAOs use. I'm not sure if this is included in the life cycle phase, but whether a DAO is supposed to last indefinitely or whether it has like an end state in mind before it's started. Yeah, super nice. Uh, thank you. Because um, I think it's different than how we define life cycle, so it's more like uh, is it supposed to end or something? Or yeah. Is the end defined? Sunset. Okay. Yeah. Sunset. Sunset. Yeah. Sunset? Short lived or long lived? Finite versus infinite game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit cheeky for a taxonomy, but it works for today. <laughs> but what, what would you call the top thing? Like set, um, sunset? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So just also to repeat, so it was brought up, um, do you need consensus before an action happens? Um, or can an, an action be initiated before consensus is reached? So you could use a concrete example of, can, the, can some of the funds in the commons pool be distributed without having, um, however consensus is defined in the DAO, um, how, before that's reached? Um, so you could say kind of um, consensus or quorum dependent action. Yeah, I, I didn't have a hint last writer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have a question about, like, uh, maybe also kind of related to that. Like, would it make more sense to have, like, a list of true or falses associated? Like, does it use uh, whatever, like, Robin's rule or the, like, uh, government system is? Does it use that? Or which system does it use? And then you end up having, like, a really long list of options, and there might be crossovers. Like when it comes to taxonomy, what's better to have a true false with a long list or to have a single category with a bunch of options? So I think I think this is one of the like as you do this, like true or false, it might be like part of that recursive um, that kind of like loop where you're like, okay, maybe there's a better way to group this so you're with all these yes or no's. So I think that that's kind of like the process. Like it might be easier to start with like staking yes no hybrid, but it might just like 
this might just fit more into like, okay, well, what's the voting process? Because you know it can go really deep, like the um, mammals, you know, like so. Just kind of like <laughs> I'm starting to see speciation of DAOs. Yeah, that's that's exactly um, what's uh, what's going on here. So we can like start to name different. I mean, that's like the ultimate goal is see if we can give each DAO like one like name. It's like Moloch is bleh, like just come up with yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> but then we're gonna we're gonna end up co committing all the same crimes of Linnaeus, you know. Um, in the end, I feel like my my itch that's starting to be born here is for a simple a permissionless taxonomy that requires close to no education to be understood. Um, but we are building a little monster here. We're making like a taxonomy called Megazord. Yeah. I mean, I think part of the problem is like you say decentralized autonomous organization. People don't really know what that means. So it's like it's really bad to yeah. It's like I don't I don't think that's gonna make people realize like what these organizations are. It's just like I'm a corporation. It's like okay, well, are you an LLC? Are you a cooperative? Are you like a social benefit corporation? Are you benefit? You know, yeah. So it's like that's what's gonna evolve in the DAO ecosystem. But since uh, Maybe the characteristics are more like nimble than corporate law. It's going to be like a little bit different. There will probably be more types of uh, ways that we're classifying things. And yeah, just like in your corporate bylaws, you might have like different characteristics of how you might allocate funds or what your purpose is. But it still kind of like rolls up into a simple, a simpler definition. Yeah, so this was our exercise in dimensions, and so you're gonna see on the worksheets that there's a lot of blank spaces, so feel free to add some of these in classify, or if there was something that you really thought that we didn't discuss that you want to use to classify um, or taxonomize different DAOs, feel free to add that. Um, yes? Just one last thing uh, that I think is not going here, that is written how you vote, if it's one person, one vote, or if you stay, uh, I don't know, voting tokens. Yeah, we didn't add that, but you, there are blank spaces, so you can add it. We didn't, we didn't define everything. We wanted to leave some of it for, for you guys all to decide. Um, and then, so like, how many groups? Like, uh, should we do five people? Yeah, you can try to get in five or six person groups, and in each group, I'll just uh, one, one handout that you can use together. Um, there are pens on all of the desks. Yeah, there are pens on all of the so we're going to have about 30 minutes for this, and then we're going to put them into the spreadsheet and map what language these all produce.